The Cape Floral Kingdom is located at the southern tip of Africa. Botanists divide the world into six floral kingdoms based on the vegetable species that grow in each one. Five of these six kingdoms occupy entire continents and their adjacent islands. The vegetation of Eurasia and North America, for example, make up a single kingdom which covers almost the entire northern hemisphere. Another covers Australia, a third covers the land of southeastern Asia, and the next two are found in South America and the greatest part of Africa. The Cape Floral Kingdom, also called the Regional Endemisms Center or Finbos, is the smallest one of all occupying only 0.04% of the planet's land surface, and yet it contains a great number of endemisms than the rest of the gigantic floral kingdoms of the world. This floral kingdom borders the cold waters of the Atlantic to the west and the milder waters of the Indian Ocean to the east. The union of the two oceans and the advanced southern latitude result in a mild climate with an average temperature of almost 17 degrees centigrade. The entire area is protected by a network of more than 20 reserves and national parks, which are responsible for protecting a natural environment which is as rich in endemic species as it is unknown to most people. The western coast of South Africa is bathed by currents from the Benguela, which originates in the Antarctic Ocean. When it hits the subantarctic waters along its northerly course, it submerges beneath them until it has almost reached the continental mass of Africa, where it is pushed upward, carrying with it a vast amount of nutrients. The flow of nutrients causes life to proliferate on the western coast of South Africa and Namibia as sites of extraordinary biological wealth. The breakwaters are the playground of fur seals at the Cape. These seals, which reproduce on the solitary rocky islets near the coast, reach the shore to rest from their fishing incursions, forming a boisterous colony. Fur seals have been hunted by man for at least 400 years. Thousands of seals have died on the southern coasts of the African continent at the hands of European hunters greedy for their precious skins. Luckily, in 1990, the South African authorities banned seal hunting because it was not known for sure what role their colonies play in the South African fishing industry. Since then, they have enjoyed a promising armistice thanks to which the population has recovered and now stands at one million specimens. Fur seals eat fish, cephalopods and crustaceans, although they have occasionally been known to attack and devour South African penguins, a seriously endangered species.
All of the islets used by the penguins as brooding colonies are protected as natural preserves or part of the national park. But the struggle with the seals continues, and there does not seem to be an easy remedy. Fleeing from the seals, some penguins have nested on the coast. But these colonies are dangerous for laying because penguins build their nests on the ground, and the eggs and chicks are easy prey for predators which do not exist on the islands. The jackass penguin, or king penguin, is a native species to the South African coast. They originally built their nests by digging in the guano of gannets, cormorants, or the penguins themselves that accumulated in the rocky islands. But starting with the exploitation of these deposits as fertilizer in the 19th century, this has become increasingly difficult, and the penguins have begun to nest in the hollows of the rocks or in the sand on the beach. During the molting season, when penguins change their plumage, the birds take on an ugly and disorderly appearance. The new feathers push against the old ones, which fluff up and fall off gradually, giving them a sickly look, as though it were a skin infection which the penguins were enduring with their characteristic tranquility. The chicks with an ashen grey colour lose the down which will be replaced by the closed black feathers that give penguins their smooth, waxy appearance. The early days of the southern summer are uncomfortable. The loose feathers which haven't yet fallen off and the quills of the replacement feathers growing underneath irritate the birds and there is a constant scratching movement in the colony. of South African penguins is estimated to be around 160,000 specimens. Human activity, primarily illegal egg collecting and excessive exploitation of fishing industry resources, which reduce the bird's feeding source, has caused the number to drop from the more than 1,200,000 specimens counted in the early 30s. Despite government protection, the future of South African penguins is still at risk. Industrial oil dumping has appeared as a new threat to an animal which spends most of its time in the ocean. Associations such as the South African Foundation for the Conservation of Coastal Birds, which holds the world record for saving the highest number of marine birds covered with oil, have made important strides, offering a ray of hope to the jackass penguin. Thanks to its efforts, colonies such as this one on Betty's Bay have increased by more than 100 reproductive pairs. Quite an accomplishment for an animal whose numbers have been decreasing steadily since 1930. The Cape of Good Hope marks the transition point for ships between the Southern Atlantic Ocean and the Indian Ocean.
Although not the most southerly point on the continent, as it is often mistakenly considered, the Cape is a historic place. The first European to go round it by ship was the Portuguese Bartolomeu Dias in 1487, marking the opening of the maritime route to the Orient. The poor weather conditions and the terrible danger of the ocean and its shallows for navigation led Dias to baptize it the Cape of Storms. But King John II of Portugal, seeing the commercial importance of the new route which opened the way to the Indies, subsequently named it the Cape of Good Hope. While the Cape in particular and the South African coast in general are dangerous for navigation, for wildlife, they are an authentic paradise. The wealth of the union between the two oceans and the contribution of nutrients from the Benguela current produce an extraordinary biodiversity. The environmental conditions foster the proliferation of microorganisms which are the basis of the nourishment for coastal invertebrates like these isopods that multiply by the millions in the intertidal area. Thousands of marine birds come to these coasts to take advantage of its biological potential. A long expanse of South African coastline, particularly in the Cape region, makes her part of the country's network of preserves and national parks. The marine birds not only feed on its coastline, but many also come here to raise their young under the protection of the national preserve. More than 10 species of terns can be observed in the Cape area. Some of them, such as the different coastal seagulls, are characteristics of sub-Antarctic regions and arrive at the Cape seasonally, marking the northern ceiling of their distribution. The beaches are a meeting place for many marine birds. It is easy to find food in the sand. The tide brings dead fish, crustaceans and mollusks from the sea, and among the algae, isopods and amphipods, those known as ocean fleas, are found by the millions. Simply moving the dead algae, a feast appears before the eyes of this harlab seagull. Otter from the Cape looks for crustaceans in the shoals of the Tsitsukikama National Park, one of the natural spaces protected inside the Cape Four region. Despite the variety and importance of the different animal species which populate the entire region, in the regional endemism center or Finbos, plants are the real stars. While in the northern hemisphere, glaciations destroyed many vegetable species up to only 10,000 years ago, there have been no glaciations in this region in the last 115 million years. This climatic stability, together with the rough topology, have made possible the uninterrupted development and the exceptional richness of the vegetable life at Finbos. Despite its reduced size, the Cape Floral Kingdom shelters more than 8,500 species of angiosperm, plants with flowers, 6,000 of which are endemic. To get an idea of this botanical wealth, simply compare the 400 species per 10,000 square kilometers of the Amazon jungle with Finbos's 1,300 species in the same amount of space. While the climate prevented the extinction of species for millions of years, scarcely 500 years of contact with man have put many endemisms in danger 
to the extent that they could disappear without being discovered. In the Cape Flora region, more than 1,400 vegetable species are in danger, and another 26 have already become extinct. Like the plants, the animals in the Cape region, many of them endemisms closely linked to the exclusive vegetation, suffered with the arrival of the Europeans. In 1652, the Dutchman Jan van Riebeck was amazed by the abundance of wildlife in the region. Since then, lions, elephants, rhinoceri and hippopotami have disappeared from the coastal plains, and other mammals such as the quagga zebra and the blue antelope have become extinct. In the national parks in this floral kingdom, the last specimens of some of the most threatened animals in South Africa are recovering slowly. The Damaliscus osprey has always lived confined to the southwestern zone of the Cape, separated from another subspecies, the white four-headed Damaliscus, by the Karoo Desert. It has never been a numerous animal, but at the beginning of the 19th century, the government started to protect it, foreseeing its imminent disappearance. Thanks to the actions taken then, and to those of ranchers such as Alexander de Bill, who in 1864 fenced in an extensive area with 300 specimens inside, this eagle, while scarce, is still alive today. The South African mountain zebra, the smallest and scarcest African zebra subspecies, was also saved from becoming extinct in the Mountain Zebra National Park, where there were barely 13 live specimens. Like the Damaliscus ospreys, mountain zebras owe their survival to the vegetable environment surrounding them, in this case, an environment which is just as threatened and fragile as themselves. The word finbos is a Dutch word which means small bramble and describes the typical shrubs with narrow leaves and thin branches that characterize the shape of many plants in this region. In finbos, flowering plants can be found year-round. For many insects, particularly some coleopteron which feed on petals, the Cape Floral Kingdom is an inexhaustible pantry, albeit one which no one is willing to share with its neighbors. spectacular and modest finbos plants and the animals whose lives are linked to them depends on a reciprocal balance. The conservation of this tiny kingdom and its protected areas has become one of South Africa's most serious ecological problems because the loss of just one species can have fatal consequences for others which are inseparably linked to it. While the white four-headed Damaliscus is the most common race in South Africa, the Damaliscus osprey has, since its origins, been a biological rarity confined to the Cape area. Today, the largest group of Damaliscus ospreys is found in the Bonte Bok National Park, created in 1937. Given its reduced size, the park cannot accommodate more than 500 individual specimens without deteriorating part of the pastures, which is why they are regularly transferred to other protected areas where they have proliferated, creating new and numerous groups. Chakmas, or black baboons, share the territory with Damaliscus ospreys without any mutual interference. In the early hours of the morning and late afternoon, the Chakma baboons feed on fruit, herbs, leaves and other fruit of the earth, spending the middle hours of the day, 
the hottest and therefore the most energy consuming, resting high up in a tree. Baboons supplement their vegetarian diet with some animal food source. They eat insects, some birds and occasionally rodents or even young gazelles. But as predators they are very deficient and they only capture animals whose defense is to remain motionless on the ground, as is the case of hares or the offspring of Thompson gazelles. They do not present any danger to young de meliscus ospreys, but their mothers are very wary and remain vigilant while the baboons are roaming around the area. The Demoliscus ospreys have only one offspring per year. At present, none of the large African predators, with the exception of an occasional leopard, cohabits in the area of distribution, so their offspring do not have natural enemies. But during the first months of life, the young and their mothers keep their senses permanently alert and any unexpected sound or movement makes them flee, running against the direction of the wind. Zebras have been reintroduced in some parks where they share their habitat with Demoliscus ospreys. There are currently some 500 specimens distributed across the different preserves which originated from the last 13 animals which in the Mountain Zebra National Park saved the species from becoming extinct in 1950. In the Cape Floral Kingdom, each species seems to be a biological rarity. There are plants and animals from an isolated region favored by climate and geology, and their reduced populations are delicate examples of the potential of biological diversity. On the 5th of June 1998, World Environment Day, the idea proposed in 1929 by the South African Wildlife Society became a reality. President Nelson Mandela announced that the Cape Peninsula would be converted into a national park, 30,000 hectares sheltering more than 2,285 plant species, 105 of which are endemic, and more animal endemisms than anywhere else make this the most biologically diverse preserve in the world. President Mandela called the new park South Africa's gift to the earth and noted that while in prison on nearby Robben Island, the view of Table Mountain included in the Cape area was a beacon of hope for him. The national park on the Cape Peninsula now protects the heart of the smallest and richest floral kingdom on the planet. For hundreds of unique species endemic to this remote corner of the world, it has become, as it was for President Mandela, a beacon of hope, guaranteeing survival for future generations. Mm -hmm.